G'day, g'day, g'day from the Creation Guy, John Mackay, way down under. And yes, we'd love to be with you, but all this COVID and all that sort of stuff, not even uh, the high-powered Zoom or YouTube apparently can get to, to you uh, very easily. Here's what we're going to do. I've got a program dealing with, well, look, I've got some lovely Jurassic fossils from our Jurassic Ark. Uh, I've got some Jurassic fossils from Germany, from the Jura Mountains, oh, the same as the plants that grow here in Australia today. So we're going to talk about rocks, we're going to talk about fossils, uh, we're going to talk about creation, we're going to talk about the flood, we're going to do it in about five segments, I think. That's to give Paul particularly the ability to chop and change a little bit if he needs to. Oh, in the time we haven't seen you, because some of you I've known for ages, g'day the lot of you. But for those of you who I've never met before, yes, we have used our time wisely to do some new books like Walking with Jesus through Genesis or the sort of things you're going to see today, Tights, Mites and Fossil Fights. And Paul has a few copies of these and they are available uh, particularly from our websites. I'd encourage you to have a good look at them. OK, would you like to see Jurassic Ark? Oh, there's our introduction. That's what the kids see. I had a bunch of kids there yesterday and adults. Jurassic Ark. Oh, Jurassic, it's named after the rocks that the man who was a world-famous um, you know, explorer and uh, geographer, his name was Alexander von Humboldt, and we know one thing about him. He believed in Noah's flood. He believed in creation. He said so. So please get out of your head that all of these names, these rock layers, these stratas, whatever, had th anything to do with evolution or millions of years. Um, I'm out here in Australia. There we are, down under. For those of you who haven't been to Australia, it's as big as the continental part of the USA. Jurassic Ark is near our famous gold mining town of Kimpy, And we have a big display there. We have 10 hectares, 22 acres, with models. We have fossils. We have living fossils. Yep, human beings are living fossils. And look, we have our friends, the dinosaur. My grandson, Ben, comes and helps us excavate the logs. Dr. Dionega comes up from Canberra. We have a wonderful team. And yesterday, we had, well, I guess you have to say, in two and a half years, we've had plenty of free time because COVID has had most things locked down. So this family group came yesterday. We taught them how to dig up fossils. We even showed them our latest Aboriginal experiment, well, not experiment, but display, just donated. They can even get to look at some of the fossils dug up at Jurassic Ark. Oh, do you see those beautiful ferns? You see, they were found in a block of limestone on Jurassic Ark. We have a big Jurassic block uh, where we are. And the interesting thing is, these go across the strata. They're polystrate ferns. We know what sort of ferns they are? Because we deliberately grow tree ferns in Jurassic Ark, a whole big after its own kind garden. But that came second. What came first was that the owners originally were putting in a big dam. They began excavating broken bits of wood, turned out to be petrified wood. We started asking folks to come and help us. And look, no branches, no roots. Look, there's a big rock at one end. Now, trees float and rocks don't. So we were looking at some kind of flood deposit where the rocks and where the trees were tumbled in together. Now, since then, we've done a lot of things. Technology has moved on. Diane Eager, myself, and Joseph Hubbard, our new John Mackay, but he's based in England at the moment. We've developed, you know, all sorts of um, video programs and YouTube programs, so catch us occasionally. We do experiments at Jurassic Ark. There's our full-time curator, Daryl. Now, Daryl is emptying our strata machine. In fact, we just discovered a new result. Look at the, oh, well, the strata machine is for making strata. But we'd just be going to clean it out when something amazing happened. Have you ever wondered how rift valleys form? 40 days and 40 nights of rain, the Bible says, and that meant the first erosion, that meant the first mud, and mud in water always ends up in layers. But we'd never seen the possibility of the fountains of the deep before. Oh, have you seen a rift valley? That happened in 20 seconds flat. It's amazing. We've even got rotary strata machines. There's me, recording. You say, why do that? Well, we wanted to investigate a theory we'd heard um, all the people told us it was true, and that is that water already has layers in it. Here's the result. We spin up the machine, the dirt's already in it, the water's already in it, and then we slow it down to an important speed. Look at the result. 
Now it doesn't end up a flat mush. In fact, it ends up as a landscape. In fact, if you think that looks like the Mises in Arizona or in Australia or on the edge of the Grand Canyon, go for it, so did we. And the strata are already in the landscape, all in 20 seconds flat. Wow, I wonder what the implications are. Now, we don't have time to do all of these uh, today, but if you want to follow up more, because Paul said our time is limited, you can see these results on creationresearch.net. Click on Exciting Research and search Rock Layers. Get yourself a copy of the book, Tights, Mites and Fossil Fights. Joseph and I put this together based on the fossil evidence. But you see, to the ordinary person, the layers took vast ages, the rocks at the bottom got there first, and the fossils represent the history of life on Earth. Who do we blame for this? Who do we trace this to? Well, there's a fairly old picture of a man called Nicholas Steno. Um, I'll tell you what, he's famous for quite a few things in paleontology. But the one thing he actually is famous for that he got wrong is this one. The layers are laid down one on top of the other, and you're taught this from kindergarten. Shake up a glass of water, pebbles and sand and mud form in layers, and the teacher says, see, that's how the layers form. You know, it occurred to me ages ago, that would be a wonderful experiment if the world was a glass of water. But what's interesting is, all the water in the world that's carrying mud or sand or rocks is moving sideways, not up and down. I'm not the first to notice, by the way, back in uh, 1627 to 1705, an Englishman famous for coming up with the, um, you know, the, the classification system along with Linnaeus, he made this comment. If Steno's principle is right, the bottom layer got there first, then the world is a great deal older than is imagined or believed. What did Steno believe? Creation, Noah's flood, a young earth beyond a shadow of a doubt. But John Ray said if he's right about the bottom layer getting there first, and come on, let's be honest, the rest of this program is probably going to sound like heresy to many of you. It doesn't sound like heresy to me. In fact, when I was at Queensland University, we had it the first week where the professor said, we're not going to discuss any such catastrophic rubbish as Noah's flood or creation. Hmm. I didn't grow up in the church, and to me that was like wet paint don't touch. So what you're about to see is a result of 40 years of thinking, doing, lectures at Oxford, debates at Cambridge, and, and you have a look at the result. Okay, here's some kids. They're sitting on the edge of the Grand Canyon, and in their minds, the guide has just said, see that layer down there? It's 600 million years old, or 300 million. The rocks on the bottom got there first. And the ages, no, Steno didn't believe in those millions of years, but the long-term consequences, John Ray said, people will see the world as a lot older, all right? The consequence, these young kids, the adults, all think, how could the Bible be true? You can read the Bible, I read the Bible, didn't go to church, but I read the Bible and it had nothing about millions of years, nothing about layers slowly forming, nothing about evolution. But by the time I'd finished geology, there's what I was thinking. The rocks at the top are the youngest, the rocks at the bottom are the oldest. And the next steps were just logical. Your brain went in A to B to C. If the bottom layers got there first, then the animals at the bottom lived and died and got buried before the next layer. And so therefore the next layer took the lifespan of the creatures in the layer below it and so on. And if you have a thousand layers, you have a thousand lifetimes to actually incorporate in this. If you add the lifespans, that makes the rocks very old indeed. And then along comes Charles Darwin. And he says, if the creatures at the top are different, it's not because of creation. It's not because of multiple creations. It's because the creatures have evolved. And that's where we are today. And you end up doing a geology course. I mean, I lectured in cold geology for several years. This is what the kids saw. This is what the students saw who were becoming coal mining engineers and things like that. The, the geologic column millions of years of evolution and the Bible is false. Come on, let's not fool ourselves. I've debated Richard Dawkins. I've, in all, all of these people believe in atheism because to them there is no evidence in the rocks the Bible is true. Now, Joseph Albert, who works with me and I, there's one of his and my favourite verses. Beware of false science. Science is merely the old word for knowledge. Beware of false knowledge. Test everything, the Bible says. 
only keep hold of the things that turn out to be true. Sure, you've shook up a glass of water. Your teacher told you in elementary school that proves the bottom layers got there first. Rubbish. That proves if the world was a glass of water, the heavy rocks end up at the bottom. What happens in the real world? Because I was in Queensland University one day when my very respectable, learned head of the department walked in and he said, I'm sorry, student, but the rocks in the Grand Canyon get all sideways. And I went, what? I hadn't been to the Grand Canyon in those days. But I thought, that's radical. They didn't get old at the bottom. They got old that way, upstream, and younger, downstream. Now, you know, that rotten cod never said another word about that in all the years I was at Queensland University. He didn't even take questions on it. Hmm. Rock layers. How do they grow? Well, if you think about it, rocks are made of little particles, all these sedimentary rocks, and therefore they come with moving water. But all moving water that's carrying mud and sand is only moving sideways. So I couldn't fault his logic. Even though I'd never seen an experiment to verify anything Steno had said. Steno didn't go out and sit in the swamps and wait for the layers to form from the bottom to the top. If you're looking at water, and to be honest, I've sat in the bores of Nova Scotia, I've watched the edge of the currents in the ocean. I've even been trapped in waves that came over the top of me as I watched what the sediment did. Rock layers actually do grow in the direction of the current. It's, it's absolutely essential they will do that. They have no other choice. The bottom layer does not got there first. Now, I'm not the first to discover this. We'll talk about him in a little while. Therefore, they will get older from upstream to downstream. Therefore, can the top layer actually be the youngest? Logically, perhaps not. Okay, let's go to Jurassic Park. Come and visit us. Now some of the borders are collapsing. You might be allowed to get into Australia. I'm certainly allowed to get into Melbourne for, a, for an Easter convention coming up shortly. Okay, Jurassic Park. Alexander von Humboldt invents the word. He's a creationist. In fact, to be honest, most of the words in the geologic column do not come from evolutionists. Okay, here's what we did. We invented this machine. You see Dr. Eager at one end. You see Joseph Hubbard at the other. Now, we didn't invent this concept. Um, we based all of this research on an Austro-German, I believe he was. He, his name is Johannes Wolfer. Now, the librarian at our university said, oh, you need to read Johannes Wolfer with a strong accent. And I said, well, that's no good. I don't read German. And so she said, well, I've got a translation. Now, what this man is famous for is that, you know, that Venice, the canals in Venice, the and the Delta? Well, he went there to try and sort the problem that still hasn't been solved. Why is Venice sinking? But he did make one important observation. The rocks change age sideways. You get the same sort of distribution of rocks going that way as you do this way. There's the first challenge. If the world does not behave, particularly in a Delta, like Steno said. This man took it up. Now, he's way more famous than I am and way more qualified with sediments, but he's come and he's been popular and he's gone, um, particularly even in creationist circles. Guy Bartow, look at his qualifications. I mean, have you written that many papers? He sure is a wide-written, written, wide-read person. In fact, you can search him on Google to see some of the experiments that were actually occurring in Colorado one year when I was there. But of course, people say you can ignore Guy Bartow because his work only applies to deltas. Okay, material is coming in, it's coming in at a certain speed, it's a big, still deeper body of water, slows down, and it certainly forms in layers. The trouble is, have you ever tried to define a delta? Can you have a delta without land borders? Because I remember, you know, the hunt for Red October, that the submarine captain was looking for layers under the sea, and those layers are going in different directions and at different speeds, and it's true. You see the same in air. You're flying along in an aeroplane, whoosh! All of a sudden, you go sideways as you hit a new current. Can you have a different definition of delta that makes his work way widespread? Okay, our experiment. Yes, thank you to those of you who donate funds. Please do so. You can see we start with fairly primitive equipment. There's Joseph. Uh, there's Clem. Oh, we've invented a Venturi pump to pump the sediment and the water at the same time. Mm. We unveiled this in 2018. But we'd done six years of experiments before this. We were already up 
the Mark VI Strata machine. Look. Hey kids, we had 400 people there to watch this. So it's not just me or Clem or Joseph who are witnesses. You see the water coming from left to right there? Kids love water, you know that, don't you? They love mud. But look what happened next. Things formed from left to right. C can you see the layers at the top? Well, the layers at the bottom are actually, you know, waterproof um, layers of ply. Um, the time that took to form is only two minutes. Everybody was amazed. The whole thing formed sideways. You see how even they are? Black, white, black, white. And then we stopped it and we chopped it in two. Now, where have you seen something like that? Like that. Wasn't it where those kids were sitting on the edge of the Grand Canyon? Wasn't it where my professor had said, sorry, chaps, the rocks in the Grand Canyon go old from upstream to downstream? Now, if you take that as being the truth, then those kids should not be seeing millions of years ago up to the present or up to 300 million years ago because time is not vertical. Time is actually horizontal. They are not looking at the millions of years of evolution. In fact, there's no millions of years of evolution because Darwin's theory is based on Hutton and Lyell and Steno, who was the creationist, who got one thing I'm absolutely convinced wrong. The rocks at the bottom don't form first. Rocks form sideways. My old professor who said nothing more about this was absolutely right. Oh, there's our waterproof plyboard at the bottom. Don't get those strata formed. But see how evenly our black and white ones are? We trumped all the way over to one of our big sand islands, got a whole heap of them, of uh, mag not magnetic of uh, mineral sand and throw it all in together and it separates out instantly the ones at the left form first the ones at the right form second what do you do with this well it's only a six foot long uh, tube and now one new one is is ten foot three meters or so that means the ones on the left are older they form before the ones on the right which means if you have a fossil starfish in the top left bed and a fossil starfish in the top right bed Think about it. The one on the left is older. The one on the right is younger. You, you and I go out there and we say, this layer that goes from Kentucky all the way through to England, this rock I've walked on in Tennessee that we call Pennsylvania, actually you can follow it all the way through Canada, all the way through England, and all the way through uh, the, the middle Europe. No, the top layer is not all the same age. It depends which way the current was flowing. And you need to see... Well, we've been really cruel to Guy Bartow because we've made it purely like a delta over there where Venice is. A delta is a much bigger concept. You see, history is horizontal. It's not vertical at all. So the rocks are not a record of evolution. And if you want to pursue this further, yes, we've done years and years of experiments on this, and sometimes our biggest opponents have been the creations themselves. Uh, you want to see more results? because I only have time to do four or five segments today. You can see the results on creationresearch.net and click Exciting Research and search rock layers. Or if you really want to be generous, no, we didn't even have to cover my flight costs over there to your conference, but you can give to our ministry as well. And I'd encourage you to give to many of the ministries that are there at the moment. Okay, end of section one. Do you like our new logo, by the way? Creationresearch.net. Can you work out the symbology? The man, the tree, and the dinosaur? Let's work out something else. We dug a big hole at Jurassic Ark. Why? We were going to put the septic in there. It's true. Uh, and we discovered something. Down through this hole, which ended up being two metres deep, we struck coal. You know the black stuff? Uh, we struck the coal, and we knew, therefore, exactly where we were in the geologic column, according to the experts. This is Jurassic coal. One of the few Jurassic beds in Australia. Okay, do you see the rock just under the coal bed? Let's go a bit closer. Here's a rocky challenge. What's this rock look like? There it is at the top. There it is. I've broken it off underneath. Can you see that this rock that's in the, in the geologic column, as it were, is already black, white, black, white, black, white? Now, where have you seen this before? Answer, in our strata machine. Here's a close-up. That's what it looks like when you take a close-up to show people Black, white, black, white, black, white. Hmm. wonder how long it took to form. Because you and I are taught each layer got there separately, one on top of the other. Well, let's run a test. 
let's pull the rock apart and then try and put it back together again. See what we find. There's helpers Clem, there's helpers uh, at the park helping us smash the rock up. There's me, I get my exercise, smashing rocks. Some of them are pretty tough. There's Daryl, our curator. There's me sitting down on the job, giving him directions. What have we done? We've smashed up the rock, we've fed it into our strata machine, it runs through the Venturi, it's totally turbulent, it's a chaos mixture. Then Clem says, trial number three, yes, test all things, only keep the things that are true. Here's the next picture. Ah, the stuff is coming in. You can see the black stuff coming in on the right side, but if you get up close, look at that. A thick layer, thin layer, black layers, white layers. In fact, if you go up even closer, look at that. Now, do you realize we can reconstruct this rock we just pulled apart? If you have a look at the original rock, there it is. If you have a look at the reconstructed rock, ignoring the time it took us to smash it to pieces, but the reconstruction took 20 minutes. Not a million years, not a thousand years, and the layers formed from one side to the other. Um, they didn't form one on top of the other. The original? Well, if you take this much rock in the geologic column and you've got hundreds of millions of years from you to the granite two kilometres down, then I'm sorry, that little layer represents at least hundreds of thousands of years. But the man-made one, the reconstructed one, is 20 minutes. Because the whole point, what you find in these strata experiments, it's not time. It's the same with creation. It's not time that makes anything. It's the right process. Get the wrong process, no wonder you take millions of years in your head. In the real world, if you have the right process, it doesn't take long at all. So our second segment, rock layers actually grow in the direction of the current. They don't necessarily grow from bottom up. They grow from upstream to downstream. In the ocean, in the bore currents, and even in wind blows. Well, there's our strata machine. There's our logo again. If you want to get in touch with us, go to creationresearch.net. Okay, third section. Paul could make up his mind about how many of these he wants to show, but I think you find them interesting because Steno and many others would have seen these layers through the Mediterranean, uh, Greece. You and I go and we say, ah, oh, the one at the bottom got there first. We are absolutely brainwashed. You can go to King's Cove in Canada. I've been there. Look at those lovely layers. They form one on top of the other. So the rocks represent history. Go to Japan. You see horizontal layers. Steno's the second principle. Things were originally laid down horizontally. The one at the bottom got there first. So when we go to Norfolk, Joseph Hubbard's area where he did a thesis on this, this position, the red layer, the white layer, and the darkish red-brown layer. We're at Hun Stanton, an old name. But the bottom layer is supposed to have got there first. And then we name them one after the other, the cast stone, the red chalk, the lower chalk, and we give them a history. So in our mind, the rock layers represent history, not process, but history, one over the other. In fact, it gets so complicated. You see, Joseph and I have done many field trips to this area. In fact, we made that a hallmark of our ministry just because it's in a creation book. Even one written by me doesn't make it true. The Bible says test everything and then only keep the things that turn out to be true. Or as a result, the bottom layer got there first, the layers were originally laid down horizontally, so if it's bent, if it's inclined, it had to be tipped up. So you walk along the south coast of England, and I've been there, and look at that. The ones on the right-hand side, they're tipped up, but they're the lowest, so they must be the oldest. The ones at the top are younger. And therefore, if you get any more bending, because it tips up and it swaps in on itself, so you end up with bigger movements and the rock starts self-changing chemically. And that's the story. It takes vast ages. Can we test any of this? Because, come on, how many of you have actually seen a university demonstration on taking a layer of sediment and actually making a mess, a metamorphic mess of it? Well, let's do it for you. Here's our strata experiments. Very early machine. We've gone through an 18-inch one, a 3-foot one, a 2-metre one, 6 feet or so. Now we're up to 3 metres or 10 feet. Okay, some young men giving us a hand, and they're pouring the sediment in one end. That's why we got rid of that method and introduced the Venturi, so we wouldn't be putting the layers in by ourselves. Hmm. But as we started, can you see something? Something I've never read about in any book. 
Do you see the fine dust is coming in first from right to left? So we put a light behind it to actually help illustrate what the, the strata was doing. Can you, can you see it yet? Because I spotted it and I thought, wow, look, the water is already in layers. Did you know that? Water and air, which are both liquids, are in layers whether you can see them or not. In fact, to give you a sample, I, I contacted a water engineer and I said, listen, we made a small strata machine, we made a bigger one, we doubled it, we tripled it in size, and we're getting the same results every time. And he said, that's because what you get depends on the properties of water, not on the width, depth, or height of the machine itself. Hey, so it doesn't depend on the shape of the delta. It depends only on the water. It doesn't depend on the size. It depends only on the properties of water. Do you realize that's true of air? It's true of any gas. It's true of water. It's got nothing to do with the speed. Um, just like this, it's got nothing to do with chance. I designed that, and our friend Sam came up with the middle logo. And together, we created something. It didn't take time. It took a process. Okay, let's see if we can sneak in this last one. Paul, be merciful to me, because a lot of this is vital, and it's brand new. And yes, they can see our books on Dinosaurs for Kids, or on Dinosaurs for Bigger Kids, uh, or on the, the Star at Christmas. We've done lots of things in COVID lockdown, lots of research, because we didn't have any people to interfere with our 10 hectare park. All right, let's go to England. Let's do some layered experiments. Let's go to Bristol. See the big arrow there? I love these GPS maps because you can take a copy of them straight onto your camera. We are at the blue dot, plus or minus 10 metres. There's me down the cliff. Can you see the layers? We geologists love layers. Of course, Steena, the bottom layer got there first. History of time, there's yours truly sitting alongside the bottom layer. We're smashing rocks. Look what I'm finding, a nice fossil scallop. Yep, we know it's a scallop for the same reason Steeno did. For the same reason Adam would have, because all the creatures were created to produce their own kind. And when Attenborough comes up with his new fancy, the day the dinosaurs died, he's going to lie to you. Because he's going to pretend that the fossils show evidence of change. But they don't. Oh, I can say that to you because I've said that personally to Attenborough and we've corresponded. I'll tell you what, look at that scholar. Look at this cliff. Oh, on another day, we took a field trip there and it was a cold day. Do you see the frost covering the cliff? Well, what's interesting about this is the Geological Association has got a story of what happened. See the red layer, the green layer, the blue layer? And in fact, they had the whole story written as a drowned desert. First of all, the sand got there, blew in, then the whole thing got covered with water. Now, I don't know about you, but drowning a desert sounds a bit like a flood, but they don't want to go there. For the same reason, my professor said we're not going to discuss any such catastrophic rubbish as creation or the flood. Um, now, back in the first days when I went there, I got the Geological Association guidebook. There's Bristol. C can you see the red line? We're going to do a section across there. In fact, they've already done it for us. You see how that red desert sort of formation forms a nice U-shaped curve down below? Uh, can you see there's limestone, those blicky, bricky duck ones? And can you see there's another um, erosional area on the top right? Well, what's interesting, of course, is the textbook tells you millions of years, process after process, erosion after erosion, vast ages. Welcome to Mark 10. Yes, we've spent a small fortune on these machines. Thank you for any help you want to send through PayPal or to creationresearch.net. Would you like, oh, there's the water coming in from the right side. The laminex, sorry, the, the clear perspex is so we can watch what happens. No, it doesn't last a huge amount of time because all of our sediment scratches it. But when we first started and we switched it on, left it going continuously, look, I never would have thought you'd get that. We could, I mean, Steno, the bottom layer got there first. No way. You know what you discover? The actual strata do not form that parallel to the horizon. They form parallel to the current. And if the current is going down, you see the ones at the bottom? The ordinary geologists say, well, this was all laid down horizontally. Then it was pushed up and twisted. No, it was laid down exactly like that. You see the ones on the right? Well, they slope up. They weren't bent up. They weren't pushed up. They were laid down exactly like that. 
Ah, all of a sudden we have a problem with Steiner because he's wrong. The bottom layers don't get there first. The layers that are deposited first get there first. And they don't lay down horizontally and they don't lay down universally. Basically everything that Darwin is based on that Steno would have held an abomination actually is based on Steno's little error that became a big error. You see the anticlines, the ones that go up and the ones that go down? That forms as we watched. The water's always flowing from right to left. None of that has happened because the water had its direction turned. They are all flowing as the water goes from right to left. The actual water flows over that hump, then hits the top, jumps up again, and it forms an anticline because that's what the water's doing. All of those layers are actually in the water and that's where the sediment deposits. Yep, I know it's unbelievable. We couldn't believe it either. We've done it many times now. The water in, 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 with sediment in it drops down layers that are parallel to the current, no matter which way the current is going. Oh yes, Steno says you're supposed to get it at 30 degrees maximum. No, you can get it at any angle, depending on what the water is doing. It's actually amazing. Look, some of those are getting closer to 60 degrees. But do you see the one at the bottom, the one in the textbook? Now, remember that engineer that we consulted? He said, I can explain that because water has the same properties whether the pipe is that big or a million miles across. The results depend on the properties of the water, not anything else. And our experiment with multiple strata machines has shown that to be true. So be a bit more gentle on Guy Barteau and be a bit more imaginative when you actually see what you can do with water. The bottom one, millions of years. The top one, 20 minutes. Hey, this is getting exciting and interesting, isn't it? You see, again, the shape of the strata is not to do with time, it's to do with process. And the process the Bible talks about is Noah's flood, and that is some scale. Hey, the bigger the scale, well, the process stays the same. I wonder what the scale does to time. You think that through. You're at a conference. You've got time to have a discussion. We're only on sort of video link here at the moment. But here's the problem. You see, the reason my professor didn't want to discuss catastrophic stuff such as Noah's flood is not because Noah's flood wouldn't be helpful. There's many places in the geologic column where flood deposition is really helpful. But you see, the Bible says they don't want to be reminded that the God who created has the right to judge the world. Check the rest of it in 2 Peter chapter 3. Oh, have you got time for one last little bit? Because we've done an amazing discovery just in the last week and we revealed it to the people who were there at Jurassic Ark yesterday and their response was, Wow, we've never seen anything like it. All of these results, by the way, came from the same strata machine. Fountains of the... Yeah. Oh, you see, in 40 days and 40 nights, it rained. The first rain means the first erosion. The first erosion means the first mud. The first mud in now moving water as it covers the earth produces your first layers. Oh, there would have been layers formed on day three when the ground and the rocks rose up above the earth and layers could have formed, but they wouldn't have had any fossils in them. These layers are, are designed to be part of God's judgment on the planet. You will have dead things. But then it says... After the 40th day, the rain stopped. The water's not coming down only from the top anymore because it mentions on day one of the flood, the fountains of the deep broke open. Most probably the water that went into the earth as the land rose up out of it. So we ran an experiment. We pumped water from the bottom to the top. Look at the results. Now, where have you seen that sort of metamorphic effect before? This is going to be in sediment. In, in, in Noah's flood, layers originally based on the properties of water, they run off the earth. But then as the fountains of the deep burst up through it, look, 20 seconds. Isn't that amazing? Yep, you could do this on any scale because the results depend not on the size of the experiment. They don't depend on whether the delta is inland or out of land or defined by a bit of perspex. They depend purely on the properties of water. Seen that before? I'll guarantee many of you have. Oh, this is done while the thing is wet. That's why some of you have said, all those bent layers can't have happened when it was dry and lifted up slowly. Yeah, I agree with you. But it was done when it was already very wet and it hadn't yet been lifted up. Hmm, 
Okay, I'm going to finishing point. Uh, I know you'll touch on this at your conference and you've got plenty of chance to ask questions. You can even email me them. I I'm disappearing to Melbourne for a couple of weeks to actually do a conference. But you see, the Bible is something you want to read because the Bible is God's word about everything that you need to know. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter says, In the last days there'll come scoffers. David Attenborough, BBC, Richard Dawkins, Discovery Channel. They don't want to know about Noah's flood, about God as creator. Where is the promise of his coming? They don't want to know that Jesus is coming back. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And Peter goes on, they are deliberately ignorant of this. You know, I got to give a lecture at the New England University, and it turns out that the guy who was my tutor at Queensland University was now the professor. And you know his one statement at the end? John, I cannot disagree with any fact you've said tonight, but why did you have to add Noah's flooding? Well, I'll tell you, you see, people need to know the world was created. It didn't happen by themselves. So David Attenborough is misleading you. But secondly, they need to know because he is the creator, he does have the right to judge. And lastly, he has judged and he will judge again. In the last day, scoffers, where's he coming? Oh, yes. As you've lived through the past two and a half years, if your ministry is like ours, we have survived on the skin of our teeth because of funding, no customers, hardly any meetings. But the Lord has got us through. But you see, more importantly, he is the Lord who created. He is the Lord of the flood and he is coming to judge. I'm grateful we've got Easter now because we can tell people he's come to die and take their judgment. Can I encourage you? We've got one prayer point to leave with you. Pray, pray, pray. We've got Joseph in England. He's building up a group of helpers there. We've got a new worker starting last weekend in the USA. Wonderful, wonderful. We've been just about dead in the water in the USA. Pray for Glenn uh, and his wife Rose, uh, sorry, Ruby, as they start work in Middle Tennessee because he wants to build a new Jurassic Ark, Jurassic Ark USA, based on what we've done here. But you see, here in Australia, we need a young worker. A, a, he, he knows God's word. He knows God's world. And he's able to debate and he's able to preach and he just doesn't want to win an argument he wants to win people for the creator before it's too late people for the creator who is jesus christ who is the savior and i'd encourage you keep us in prayer and if you want any more to see about this there's my final slide uh, paul you can leave that up there for a little while so they can write it all down see all these results and many more on creationresearch.net see exciting research and click on search rock labs you will enjoy it. God bless. Great to join you. Wish we could be there maybe next year when everything is much easier. Okay, God bless. Over and out.